in this episode of XX Files. If we can gain a glimpse of what their health status is just by taking a small piece of skin and looking at these microbes, then that may aid our understanding of their health. And ultimately, that's what we need for their conservation. Oh, the humpbacks, great. Oh, well, there's a couple up here. Little dolphin. <laughs> oh, here he is. My name is Amy April and I'm an assistant scientist at the Woods Hole Oceanographic Institution. I've been studying the skin microbiome of the humpbacks for several years now and we've started to um, pick apart some trends in this microbiome. A microbiome is basically just an assemblage of microorganisms. These are mostly single cells that live in association with a marine animal. We've been able to look at several health compromised whales. Those have either been stranded on beaches or entangled in, in fishing line. And what we found is that their microbiome is shifted compared to the healthy animals. And so they don't have these same, what we think are potentially helpful groups of bacteria on their skin. And these health compromised animals also have started to develop relationship with potential pathogens. So if we can gain a glimpse of what their health status is just by taking a small piece of skin and looking at these microbes, then that may May aid our understanding of their health and ultimately that's what we need for their conservation. So we're going to look at the microbes in it two different ways. One way is we look at who the microbes are using their DNA as well as look at where the microbes are under the microscope. It's been really exciting to bring this um, new way of looking at the microbiome to a community of marine mammal scientists that are already so invested in learning more about the health of these animals and the measures that are needed to conserve the species. I'm working with Juke Robbins, who's a senior scientist at the Provincetown Center for Coastal Studies. Juke's been fantastic in getting us skin samples that we can take into my lab and start to analyze and look at, at the microbes. Do you see him, David? That might have been a dive, which means we may not see him for a few minutes. Yesterday we were out on the tip of Cape Cod chasing humpback whales and we were lucky enough to obtain a skin biopsy sample from one of these humpback whales. We then spend a little bit of time cleaning up the, the samples um, and then we send them off to a sequencing facility. Usually within a couple weeks we receive our data back. The sequence data that we get back is just letters. This is the DNA code in every sample that we've looked at from basically around the world. We find two main groups of bacteria, the Tanakibaculum genus and the Psychrobacter. This is a really powerful finding that we find whales and living in really different ocean environments that have the same types of bacteria on their skin. And then whales do this other thing that I think is really cool, is that they shed their skin pretty frequently, and so they're constantly somehow reviving that population of microbes. We think there must be some other type of mechanism that allows these cells to maintain residence on the skin surface. The whale skin is so complex and that there's so many cells there that it's really challenging to pick apart what is a, a microbial cell. So the way that we're going about that is we're using a, a DNA strand that's specific for bacteria and it has a fluorescent tag on the end. And we add that to these little thin sections and allow it to sit overnight and then what we'll do is look at it under the microscope and where we see that fluorescent tag should correspond to where the bacterial cells are. Oh yeah, there's the edge. Oh, that's cool. So here we're looking at the surface of the skin layer and under the microscope we see the structure of the, the skin in white here in contrast to the black where there's no sample. And what we're looking for are some, some bright spots where our probe hit and we do see a few of those on the surface, right in that area. Yeah, there's another chain of 
cells over there, and potentially some deeper as well. Once we look at, at more samples, we'll be able to form a better understanding of, of how these cells are associating with the whale skin. So we've been following this juvenile humpback whale for several minutes now. And thus far we don't recognize it as a whale that we've cataloged before, nor as a whale that we've biopsy sampled before. And that's why uh, it's important for us to get a sample today uh, to apply to a number of different studies. Jen is poised with the dart biopsy, and what Jen's going to be doing here is hopefully when the whale comes up to the surface and the boat is at the right angle and close enough to the animal, Jen is going to release that dart and get a skin biopsy from from the whale. All right. Nice work, Jen. It's like a sample. The dart has a float that will let it remain at the surface until we're able to pick it up with the net. Being able to scale up from, from this relationship that we're studying in the lab to, to actually seeing these animals in the wild is uh, really important. We're also interested in expanding our studies to more species of marine mammals. So we've studied about 16 species thus far and there's about 129 species of marine mammals out there. We're finding new kinds of life um, every day and these microbiomes on marine mammals haven't been studied in any capacity in the past and so it's allowing us to, to discover a new relationship. I can't believe how many new collaborations I've been able to spin up just in the last few years and so I think this is a really good sign and, and a promise that we're going to be able to continue this research. What does the trumpet sound like? Yeah, it's it's a it's a blow, but with more energy more behind it and a bit of whine. Like a tone, a little bit of tone. Not quite like an elephant. Yeah. <laughs> huh? Oh, I heard that trumpet. So it's been shown that dogs can actually detect cancer. What we're doing is we're trying to use dogs to help us determine what volatile biomarkers are associated with ovarian cancer.